Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Effective Resume Thursdays. We're very glad you're with us today. It is June 3rd, 2021. Uh, please note this event is currently being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you happen to post a comment in the chat box or uh, have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comment name and pictures to appear. Uh, we will be, uh, our speaker will extensively be using the chat box is what you see in the lower uh, left-hand corner. So hopefully you're on that speaker view in the lower left-hand corner. And uh, where you see that red arrow, there's a little white line there. You can grab that and you can drag that back and forth to make the speaker bigger or smaller. But uh, please have your chat box up because we will be using that throughout the presentation. If you do have any questions, as soon as you think about them, put them right in the chat box. And uh, for those on Facebook, please just send your questions into the comment field. I'm monitoring that feed and I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. We are going to be viewing, reviewing one or two resumes live today. I see we already have one so far. So if anybody else would like to submit their resume, you can do so in the chat box by just clicking on the file button. If you'd like to delete your header information, please do so before you submit your resume, because remember your information will be on Facebook and YouTube. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I uh, founded careerdfw.org, a website to help those in who were unemployed in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Excuse me, in 2012, I started a website called careerusa.org to help those outside the Dallas Fort Worth area by uh, helping them put everything about their job search in one place. I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. And uh, I took it over in 2007, and I'll tell you about our upcoming programming tomorrow at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. If you'd like to uh, have a practice interview, don't wait until you have one scheduled. Practice now. Uh, if you'd like to get more information, we'll put some information in the chat box here in just a sec. Uh, we are going to be giving away at the end of this session. We'll be picking two winners to uh, win a month unlimited use of jobscan.co. It'll be for the month of, let's see, this is June, so it'll be the month of July, you'll be able to use it. So uh, hang in there to the very end and we'll have a little contest on how to uh, get a month's use of that for free. Well, our speaker today is Carol Burkell. She's a certified professional career coach. You've, uh, Carol pops up on all sorts of webinars around the city throughout, the, uh, throughout time. So Carol, thank you for being with us and uh, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's great to be here again, and I will share my screen, except... I'll Hold on. Here we go. Now you can. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There we go. I will share my screen, and it's great to see everyone here today. I see that people are already using chat to start networking. In a moment, I will encourage you to um, network with each other. And to get started, I'll get into presentation mode. And we have designed this, as Jeff mentioned, to be very interactive. And um, so I'd like for everybody to click on the chat box and uh, type in an answer to this question um, to get us all warmed up using chat. What do you do to ensure that your resume is free of spelling and grammatical errors? What do you do? Because I will say, as a recruiter, and when I talk to my recruiting buddies, um, we say that about 95% of the resumes we see have some sort of error in them, either verb tenses or grammar or some sort of issue. And when you see me looking over here, you'll, I'm looking at my chat box. So I'm curious, does anybody have any methods or anything that they do to make sure that your resume is free of spelling and grammatical errors? Yes. Yeah, somebody's identified a really good subject matter expert, somebody who has a PhD in English. That's great. Find somebody you trust to take a look at it. And in this world of applying for jobs, we recommend um, modifying your resume every time you apply for a job. So when you make a modification, there's a risk that you could have made a mistake. So you need to double check and um, you know, double check for errors. So thank you for that. 
And then also in chat, I see some people have started to network and I encourage you to do that. So if you wanna take a moment right now and type in your name, your job title, and maybe one or two target companies and put it out there in chat and watch for people that are trying to get connected with companies where you may know people and reach out to each other and help each other out. So you're welcome to do that in chat today. I see several people are starting to do that. Good. And uh, once again, we've designed this to be very interactive. So I recommend that you set your phone aside. Now, if your phone rings and it's a recruiter or a job offer, take it. But I recommend while you're in this webinar, um, put, you know, really focus on the content, focus on the interaction, all the comments that people are making and questions people are making in chat. And, um, and I'm sharing some new content today. So um, please, you know, get as much out of it as you possibly can. And you'll hear me sharing, you know, several ideas about resumes or a lot of different ideas. And they're from my perspective. And you're welcome to listen to them and then apply what, what makes sense to you and what you think would work for you. And ideas that you think don't really make sense for you, you don't have to use those. I'm just sharing as many ideas as I can. And I welcome people in the audience also. If you, because there's several people at their names I recognize that are really good experts on resume writing. And if you have ideas as well, feel free to share those into chat as we're talking through this. So I'm sharing things from my background based on my experience as a hiring manager and a recruiter. I worked for over 30 years at EDS, an IT firm that was acquired by Hewlett Packard back in 2008. And then I took early retirement in 2012 and then I gained six years of valuable experience as a recruiter, both in agency and corporate environments. So I walked a mile in those recruiter shoes. And so I know what it feels like to look at hundreds or thousands of resumes and present those to hiring managers and get feedback about those. So, um, and, and I've placed candidates in a variety of different roles, accounting, finance, HR, a variety of roles. And like Jeff, I volunteer for the Dallas Pit Crew. That's the practice interview team. And this is the organization where you can practice your interview skills. So I highly recommend if you spend a few hours working on your resume this week, also spend a few hours practicing for interviews. Even if you don't have an interview scheduled yet, you can use just a sample job description in your resume send an email to the Dallas Pit Crew at gmail.com and we have the information loaded into chat um, and we can get you scheduled for a mock interview and give you valuable experience and feedback. And then I'm certified by the Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaches and I keep close in touch with that organization and attended their uh, conference last month as well to get uh, late breaking information. And I also keep in touch with my friends in uh, the recruiting industry, especially Next Step Recruiting, where I retired from in 2019. And they are always looking for accountants, accounting supervisors, AP managers, billing people, HR people, and programmers, IT people more at the programming le level. So if you're um, looking for any of those types of jobs and want to be connected with a great recruiter, uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I can get you connected to a great recruiter. And recruiters can be valuable for you. They can give you feedback about your resume, feedback about the job market, and they can be the ones to advocate for you and present you at the top of the stack to hiring managers. So, um, so if you don't have a recruiter working for you, uh, please reach out to me and I'll get you connected one way or another with a recruiter. And I keep in touch with a variety of recruiters and various agencies and corporations because I was a corporate recruiter as well. And let's see, we've got quite a few people here today and here's our agenda today. And we have two parts. I'll be covering some content in the first part and during the second part, we'll look at sample resumes. And so far I've received one and thank you for that. And we might have time to look at a second one. So if anybody would like to have the resume reviewed towards the end of this session, you can send it to me as a file in chat and if you want to remain anonymous, you can delete your contact information off the top um, because this is being recorded and onto YouTube and everything. So uh, that's up to you, but you're welcome to share that with me and we might have time to review a second resume. 
but we'll um, review some information about applicant tracking systems. And um, instead of advice from an expert recruiter, I've done some research this, this week, and I'm going to share some top resume writing tips that put you ahead of the competition. And then we'll also talk about one page bios and how they're different from resumes. And we'll talk about master resumes, the concept of that and key components of a resume. And we'll look at the one sample we've received so far. And if anybody else has a resume they'd like us to look at, we'll give you some free coaching here. We'll tell you what we like about it and maybe give some suggestions on what you could do to even improve the effectiveness of it. So are you all ready to rock and roll? And feel free to go into chat and share your name, title, and a couple of target companies. And watch the chat. And if you see people that are trying to get in the door at a target company where you know people, you know, reach out to that person. Maybe you all can help each other out. Good. So a quick review of applicant tracking systems. And these are the systems when you're applying online. They read the data in your resume and they parse the data and put it into a database. So you don't want to have a lot of special characters, boxes, head, um, underlines, uh, special bullet points, graphics, because that can foul up uh, the reading of your data. And uh, some systems like Workday don't read information that's put in the header. So if you use Microsoft Word, don't put contact information in the header because it won't get read by some systems. And each system works a little bit differently, but just basically want to keep it clean. But you do want to make sure your resume is aligned to the language and the keywords, the requirements in the job descriptions that you're applying for. And you do want to modify your resume each time you apply for a job. So you want to come up with a naming convention, you know, your name, maybe dot in the name of the company for your resume so you can keep track of all the different versions of your resume. And um, as Jeff mentioned, we'll be giving away a couple of uh, licenses to jobscan.co, which is a great tool to compare your resume to a job description to see how close of a match you are. And most applicant tracking systems give you the opportunity to also upload your resume as an attachment, and that's the version that a recruiter would see. So that version, you probably wanna put in a PDF format so the format is protected. And that's the version they would be giving to the hiring manager to review. And then also, they often give you the opportunity to do a cover letter. Now, most of us recruiters don't have time to read cover letters, but if they ask for it, it's a good idea to go ahead and do a quick cover letter. And because hire, some hiring managers, and I've read some statistics, last conference I attended for resume writers, uh, somebody had done a, a big survey of hiring managers and found 60% of hiring managers do look at cover letters because they're looking at your attention to detail, your writing style. So we'll, we will attach an, a, um, a sample cover letter layout that you can use and leverage. And the most important thing to put in a cover letter that's different than a resume is to put why you're interested in working at that company, why you're motivated to work at that company. That's something that would get their attention. And thank you, I just got a second resume. Yay, good. So we have two resumes we'll review towards the end of the session. And that's fun because that's different every week and that's fun to see. And we've loaded the sample uh, cover letter in chat. And then here's some more advice regarding these applicant tracking systems. You, you may hear conflicting information about these systems and how they work. That's because they all work differently. They all use a different type of coding. And even each company can implement them differently and configure them differently. So you basically just have to kind of keep the big picture in mind and don't use a lot of fancy formatting for the version that you upload. And, um, and if you have the chance, like with Workday, you can then look at the data to see what's been uploaded to make sure the data was uploaded cleanly. And then uh, the most important thing is to contact a person. And I'll ask my one of my favorite questions, and some of you may have heard this before, but when you apply online for a job, what's your chance of getting called for an interview? What percentage chance? Type a number in chat. And some of you may have heard me say this before. But when you apply for a job online and just sit back and wait to get called for an interview, what is your percentage chance 
Yes. And a couple people are right on the nose, 2% chance. And, and I have found that to be true. I read that in a, in a couple of articles. And then also as a corporate recruiter, we would typically post a job. We get 300 applicants. I might look at the top 20 or so, a couple screens worth of resumes, and maybe call the top five or 10 and bring in five um, for an interview. And so that's actually, I think, less than 2%. So, um, so what you have to do when you apply online, you have to take an extra step. You need to contact the person. And I was just doing a session, as Jeff mentioned, I kind of pop around and do different sessions with different people. And I was chatting with um, Foster Williams on Tuesday during his session. And he and I, we both agree that our favorite tip to give job seekers is this one, contact a person after you've applied for a job online and let them know that you meet the requirements for the job and specifically which requirements you meet, you know, especially the top requirements. And when I say contact a person, who do I mean? Uh, the first thing is look on LinkedIn to see if you know any, if you have any friends there and send them a quick email, attach your resume and say, I just applied for this position, requisition number, and I meet the requirements specifically. I'd be grateful if you could forward my resume to the recruiting staff. And, um, and then your friend might get a referral bonus because a lot of companies give substantial referral bonuses like $2,500 in some cases. Um, and if you don't have a friend at the company, look for the name of the recruiter. If sometimes on LinkedIn, you can see the name of the recruiter who posted the job. And then if you can't find the name of the recruiter, then you ask, who do I contact? And I don't recommend reaching out to just any recruiter because they could be working on 20 or 30 other job openings or job um, you know, openings that are open and they're probably underwater too busy. So I'd go a level up and look for a recruiting or talent acquisition leader and reach out to them, either quick LinkedIn message or pick up the phone, call the main number, ask for that person by name, they'll put you through to their probably their voicemail leave a quick message, you know, hi, I'm Carol Burkell. Just, I'm applying to your campus recruiting position and I meet all of the requirements. Specifically, I've recruited for the, all of the school, the main schools in the state of Texas. And I'd be happy to have a conversation. When I got calls like that, I always called those people back and I usually invited them in for an interview if they met, if they truly did meet the requirements. And those were the people I hired because those are people that were very proactive, so. That is our favorite tip from Foster and I. <laughs> okay, now this is some of the research I'd, I'd done a, a little while ago, and it's a, it's a good article. It actually had 20 points in it, and I picked out my favorite top 10 from this article, and it's posted on a website called The, the Muse, which is a place for career research, and I thought it was a well-written article. Now, there was one tip that they posted in this article that I'm not sharing. It says, Keep your resume to one page. Um, if you have an opinion about that, write that in chat. Yeah, they said, keep your resume to one page. <laughs> if anybody has an opinion, write it in chat and then I'll share my opinion about that. But I'll cover some of the other points that they brought up, which, which I thought were really good. Um, somebody said they disagree. I absolutely disagree with that because as I talk with um, re my recruiting friends, and remember, recruiters are just scanning resumes. If they just see a one-page resume, they're just going to assume that you're right out of college and you don't have much experience. So if you're a professional with maybe two or three jobs or more um, and, and some experience, put it on two pages. Yes, that's kind of the sweet spot. Now, some jobs, more highly technical jobs, um, even more pages is better. So, yeah. And then, and we'll talk about one page bios and how that's different. Yes. Okay. And unless you've graduated, just graduated from school, it should be two pages. Thank you for that comment, Jason. That's, that's perfect. And then here are some of the points that I, I really liked in the article. Avoid spelling and grammar errors. And that's why I asked that question up front. What do you do to ensure that you don't have any spelling or grammar errors? If you don't have a process in place, put some sort of process in place, whether it's printing it off and double checking it, reading it backwards, whatever your tricks are, 
or if you have a trusted friend, you could shoot it over to them, have them take a quick look at it. I do it sometimes as a career coach for my clients. Uh, I just do that as an extra value add uh, just to take a quick look. Watch your tenses. This drives recruiters nuts. If you have a job in the past and some of your tens tenses for your bullet points start with a verb in the past tense, but some of them are in the present tense, that drives us nuts because it doesn't show good attention to detail. So watch your tenses. Now, if you're currently working in your current job, most of your bullet points may be in the present tense, but maybe you've completed a project or accomplished some major accomplishment. You might have a couple bullets that are in the past tense. Maybe put those towards the bottom so it doesn't look like a mistake. Have all your current ones in the current tense and then um, present tense and then the past tense. And then they say, send your resume as a PDF. I will put a caveat on that. Now, when you're uploading it into an um, applicant tracking system, you need to do it in, in native Microsoft Word so the data can get parsed. Some systems like Workday don't like PDFs very well. But when you attach it for the recruiter, you can attach it as a PDF. And then when you're working with a staffing agency, they actually prefer you send it in native Microsoft Word format so that they can attach their letterhead to the top and their logo when they're sending it to their clients. So it kind of does depend. So send your resume as an attach, um, as a PDF when it's an attachment when you're applying online. And then when you're working with a recruiter, you may want to send them both versions, you know, so they can see the formatting that you like, but they also have the native MS Word version and make sure it's easy to read. Lots of white space, less is more, less words, shorter bullet points, one line, two lines max. Make sure it's easy to read, easy to scan, really. There's something called the three word rule in the, in the wor world of recruiting. Um, recruiters are scanning your resume and they may just read the first three or four or five words in each bullet point. So make sure it's easy to read and front load those bullet points with um, impactful verbs and quantify as much as possible. So if you have accomplishments that you can quantify, please do that. Good. And name drop and title drop. If you're applying for a VP of HR position and you've had that title, be sure you're showing that in your resume. Put it at the top of your resume. And if you reported directly to the CEO, put that in there. Um, and, and if you had major clients, uh, use those names. If you have approval from those clients to include those names in your resume. So, And then use judgment when it comes to creativity. Um, in the old days, just a few years ago, we used to say, you know, make your resume pop with lots of fun graphics and everything. But now... Uh, you want to make it clean, easy to read, easy for a recruiter to scan. So you don't want to make it too creative with multiple columns or colors or fancy fonts. So, um, so be careful about that. And um, I think this one's Jeff's favorite. <laughs> we'll talk about this with the concept of the master resume. On the master resume, you want to keep a record of everything you've done. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But on a resume, when you're applying for a job, don't list everything you've done. They don't care. They want to know, they want to see evidence that you've done the things that they're looking for for that job. So think about the person who's reading your resume. Think about what they will care about. There might have been some fun projects you did that you're very proud of, but the hiring manager won't care about. So those are ones you'd probably leave off for that particular resume. And then think about the specific job you're applying to. And we'll show a, a visual of how to analyze the job and update your resume. Any questions about that? If you have any questions or comments, reactions to any of these, put those in chat. So I'm going to go back. So we one thing I like to, to add to, especially for number one, avoid spelling or grammar, grammar errors. Uh, somebody I saw in the chat put down M use MS Word. The problem was using MS Word is that it's not going to pick up there and there or two, two, and two. But there was another program called Grammarly, G R A M M A R L Y or something. Uh, it just runs in the background of your computer. 
And no matter if you're on, if you're sending emails or text or uh, uh, Word documents or uh, even in Excel, if it detects something that isn't right, it actually will recommend and highlight it and let you go, hey, you need to check this out. I highly Thank recommend grammar. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, I saw that comment come in and thank you so much for that. So does anybody else have any reactions to these? Or do you see any that are really impactful? I like this. Think about the person reading your resume. Either the person or the machine <laughs> that's reading your resume. Think about the job. Good. And now we'll talk about the concept of a one page bio. And that's different than a resume. And I think several people in our audience may have a one page bio. If you do, I go into chat and, and say yes and, and write how you've used a, a one page bio. Because a, a resume really screams you're looking for a job. So if you're networking and wanting to get in the door in a company and setting up an informational interview and you send somebody your resume, they may not call you because they, they may think, I don't have a job for them, so I'm not going to even call them. I don't know what they want. But if you reach out to them and let them know that they were recommended to you and you're just open to feedback about your career um, and just want 15 minutes of their time, um, you could maybe attach your bio just to give an overview of who you are as a person. Uh, they may be more likely to respond to you because they won't be afraid that you're looking for a specific job and, and you've only told them you need 15 minutes of time and you're just looking for advice. So, um, so it's a much gentler document that can be used more as a multi-purpose tool. And um, I had looked and looked for an easy version of a one-page bio that um, would be easy for people to update. And one of my clients had this version and he got really good feedback about it. So I asked him if I could uh, leverage his template and I just plugged my information into it and we're sharing it in chat. And you're welcome to use it and leverage it, and reformat it if, if you wish. It's just Microsoft Word, but you can put your picture on it because this is more of a social networking document as opposed to a resume, which is a job application document and can be tied to employment law situations. Um, and biases and that type of thing. This is just a social networking, like LinkedIn is a social networking platform. Um, so you can put your picture on it and list a few bullet points regarding your areas of expertise, an opening paragraph about who you are as a professional relating to the jobs you're applying to, the professional biography, just you know, company names and dates if you wish, and your degree, certifications, contact information, and key achievements, and qualifications relating to those key areas of expertise. Okay, how do you know? It's time for a practice interview. Bye. <laughs> Somebody's going off to oh, lead a practice interview, I think. Yeah, good. And somebody um, has used a one page bio during informational interview settings. That's perfect. That's perfect. And one time I had a client living in Houston and he wanted to break into the Dallas market. He was in IT sales. And so I helped him create an executive bio. And then what I did for him was I sent it to my top 10 favorite IT sales contacts in the Dallas area and said, hey, I want, to, want you to meet this guy. And if you have a few, you know, 15 minutes of time, he would welcome your feedback. And out of those 10 people I reached out to, four of them reached out to him and gave him some really good leads and feedback about his career. So it was just a great way to just kind of break the ice and introduce this guy to some other leaders in the industry. And it generated quite a few conversations for him. So it's, it's a good multi-use doc document. And more and more of my clients are starting to use these for networking. Okay. And now the concept of a master resume. Jeff, if you'd like to share your thoughts about this. Well, uh, make, make your life easy by creating, your, creating a master resume. And a master resume is everything you've ever done since high school and or anything that's relevant to your career that you're doing. And then once you've, and every, you put all the addresses, who you reported to, uh, 10, 15 bullet points, your successes you had in each one of those jobs. And then that way, when you see a job description that you're interested in, take that master resume, 
save it as whatever, however you're saving things, and then start deleting everything that's not important. Like Carol already said, if the recruiter isn't asking for X, don't tell them about X, just tell them about Y and Z, what they're looking for. So this way it makes your career search much easier now and in the future because you can take that, you can just keep updating that master resume. So, uh, you know, if it's 10 or 15 pages long, great, but you just cut back and you only tell them, you tell the recruiter what they want because your resume is just a hook to get them to call you up. Great, thank you so much for that. And yeah, the master resume is a great tool to have because it'll save you time because you'll have everything in one place, all those supervisor names or phone numbers, you know, when people are asking for references and such. Good. And so now we'll talk about characteristics of good resumes and then we'll look at the samples that people have sent me. And um, so you want to make sure it's easy for ATS systems and screeners like recruiters and hiring managers to see very quickly within a few seconds that you're a good match for the job. So you want the formatting to be clean and easy to read. Overall length, we've talked about two pages is the sweet spot for professional jobs, but some can be longer for highly technical or um, higher education jobs. And number of years, this is where we like to get interactive and post a question. And I'm interested, and this is kind of a personal choice. You might hear different perspectives on this one. So how much experience should you show on your resume? Should you show all of your experience? A, or B, show only the most recent 10 to 15 years? Or C, focus on the recent 10 to 15 years, but then have prior relevant experience. And then list maybe some prior company names and titles. You can leave off the dates there if you wish. And the funny thing is, I used option A when I was 59 and a half years old applying for a job and I got the job. Um, I showed them everything because most of the people I was networking with knew my background name, knew I'd been at EDS forever. And so, um, and I went in with the mindset that um, I was trying to find out what they needed at the staffing firm. And I told them, I have the experience to do what you need. And they hired me. So and we're still dear, dear friends. So that worked for me, but it may not work for everyone. And um, B, oh, I'm seeing less and less people hitting B. I like that. That's a good trend. It used to be like 50% of the people would say B. And then I'd tell my story. And, and some people have heard this story. As a recruiter, I often saw people chop off their resumes after the most recent 10 to 15 years. And it looked like something was missing. And the hiring managers would go, wait, is this the whole story? And then during interviews, it would be confusing because they would refer to company names that weren't on the resume. And so it just caused confusion. So I found hiring managers really preferred C. And you can kind of mask how many years you've been in the marketplace or been working uh, because in the prior relevant experience section, you can just list the company names and the job titles. Um, now, when you fill out the application and on LinkedIn, they, they do ask you to put the years, but on your resume, you don't, you don't have to. Okay, so thank you for playing along with that. And now we'll talk through and just kind of quickly review key components of the resume. These are some of the key components we'll talk about. There could be others as well, but these are some of the major ones. First one is the heading. Now make sure again, it's easy to read with your name, uh, phone number, closest major city. I just saw a resume the other day with a suburb I hadn't heard of in the Dallas area. And I've lived here since a long time. I won't say how many years. <laughs> Um, people can probably guess how old I am. But anyway, um, I'd never heard of it. So I said, you may want to put Dallas because I didn't know what it was. And then email address. Make sure it's professional sounding with your first and last name. And also so it's easy for recruiters to find it in their stacks of emails. When people use res uh, email addresses with funny codes in them, I can never find them in my email. And then also use your LinkedIn address. And you want to modify your LinkedIn address to take off all those extra codes that, and letters or numbers that LinkedIn adds. And you can do that really easily by going into your LinkedIn profile and click on the upper right corner of the screen, edit your um, I guess profile URL. And Jeff's session at one o'clock on Mondays gives you a good overview about LinkedIn. Okay. And do not include your physical street address. That's not 
recommended anymore. And summary section. Now this, as a recruiter, most of us, we just love this part of it because we wanna be able to see at a glance if you have the skills we're looking for. It's not an objective that I'm seeking a job where I can grow my skills. It's a statement of who you are as a professional. So this is where you wanna really read that job description, understand the heart of what they're looking for and then echo that in the first few words or first line of the summary. Um, so if you're a business analyst, applying for a business analyst job, um, put, it, put that title front and center. And if the main thing in that job is documenting business requirements, put that in the first few words in this opening sentence. And you might hear different perspectives. Most of my recruiter friends like to see a very brief statement here, two or three lines at the most, because recruiters don't really read. They'll probably just read the first few words really, or the first line maybe. Um, and I've seen some people skip this and just go right to the bullet points. When I see that, um, it makes me wonder about the writing style. It looks like something's missing a little bit. So it looks a little jumpy to me, um, but that's a personal preference. I um, And the certification I've gone through, they recommend kind of an opening statement that's brief like this. And the first five to six words are the most important. And then areas of expertise. And you wanna be sure the ones across the top and in the first column are ones that are mentioned in the job description. And this is where you wanna modify your resume every single time. If you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to chime in and chat. And some of this is a matter of style and personal preference. And I'm just sharing some ideas based on my experience. And then another section you can include is key accomplishments. And I see this most often with jobs like sales, business development, even recruiting type of jobs where you have to meet targets. And when you need to show a track record of meeting your targets, even over, over time, over a series of jobs, like over a number of years. And it's nice to have a summary of that at the top of your resume. And then of course, down below in your professional section, You'll, you'll show where you achieved those accomplishments as well. So, um, so that's a nice optional section if showing that track record is important. Professional experience. Uh, we all recommend reverse chronological order as opposed to a functional resume. Every hiring manager that I've ever shown a functional resume, they put, give it back to me and say, give me the chronological one. They wanna see your story. They wanna see your track record. You want to see your longevity with the company. And you want to make sure your verbs are parallel, like we mentioned before, jobs in the past. Your bullet points should start with strong, results-oriented verbs and all in the past tense. You wouldn't believe how many times I see a mixture of verb tenses. And um, hire, some hiring managers will just throw those resumes away. And then a lot of recruiters like to see a one-line description of the company especially if it's a company that's not very well known. So you can see, they can see the industry and get to know you a little bit more and um, limit the number of bullets per job. Um, you don't wanna have 10 or 15 bullet points. I think five or six is good. And you wanna focus on results. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is you don't want the bullet points to just sound like tasks or a job description. Um, and if they do, what you can do is ask yourself, so what? Read the bullet point and say, so what? What was the result? And if you get to another verb, use that stronger verb for your bullet point, like the third from the bottom here, reduced data migration time. Um, we actually went through this exercise in this particular resume because they were just talking about doing the task of writing a visual basic program, but I asked what the result was. And the result was reducing data migration time and increasing stakeholder confidence. So um, make sure where you can have your bullet points focus on results. And you can do that by asking, so what? And if you've had multiple, um, I'm gonna make a do a little thing here, hide names of annotators, okay. Um, if you've had multiple roles at one company, uh, what we recommend is to put the full-time right justified that you're with the company, but then the different roles put the dates next to the job titles for those roles. Otherwise, if all of these dates are all right justified, 
at first glance, when a recruiter's scanning your resume, which is what they do, they don't really read very well, they scan them, it looks like you're a job hopper. But if you do it this way, it shows better progression and it shows a better story. And then be sure to include your education, especially if they you know, ask for education in the job description and software skills, and especially highlight any software that they're looking for in the job description. And then if you don't have a degree, you can write something like this, the name of the school and location and the major or area of concentration and the number of course hours, if you'd like. And then this is the graphic I like to show um, because this is a very important exercise. Every time I'm working with a, a client who's applying for a job, we always pull out the job description. And on the left here is a job description for a business analyst role. And I work with my clients to really study the job requirements that are typically down at the bottom of a job description. I'd say requirements, qualifications, here's what you bring to the job. And you wanna look at what they're looking for. So if they're looking for methodologies like Agile and, and Scrum, be sure, and if you've got that experience, be sure to highlight that front and center. Look for the software they're looking for. If you've got that experience, put it front and center. And recently I saw somebody, um, they were learning a, a, a software package. So in this situation, they would have put Visual Studio training. You know, they've attended some training. Maybe they haven't done a lot of job application on it. So at least they put it on the resume and they put it honestly, they, they've gone through some training. Now, if they'd gone a step forward, further and had done some either pro bono projects with it, they could have just listed it as experienced and explained those projects. And then also you wanna read the top part of the resume when they're really describing what's at the heart of the job. And this one, you know, documenting those business requirements and working with clients is really at the heart of the job. And so that's why it's important to, to show that in, in your opening summary about yourself, that you're, you're basically that kind of person. So this is an extremely important exercise to go through. It'll take just a few minutes for you every time you apply for a job. And it may save you time because once you've evaluated the job description, you may determine that maybe you don't meet all of the requirements. And so therefore you might be wasting your time to try to apply for it. So it'll help you decide, you know, which jobs to apply for. In today's competitive market, especially when you're applying online, you want to apply for jobs where you meet the requirements. Now, you might be able to get in the door if you network in through a former boss or something to make a career transition to a job where you don't have as many of the requirements, but that takes um, some different type of networking to do that. And the other point also to remember, you know, people always say, well, do I really need at least Microsoft Office? Everybody knows Microsoft Office. If it's on their job description, go ahead and put it on your resume because there's another match word. Those are two more words that would match with you. So, you know, and, and it just it just helps you. It helps you match. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to find all those great resumes. There we go. I was just trying to find my folder with all those wonderful resumes. Okay, I think I'll keep it on the screen. Okay, I'm trying to remember who's the first one. Okay, I'll do the first one. First one first. And I'll probably have to do a new share. Here we go. Now when I hit this button, I'm not going to hit the button because it'll throw me out of Zoom. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good. So I'm going to scroll down this resume. And I'd like for audience participation here. You know, as you're looking at the resume, um, if you have compliments for this person, go ahead and type those into chat, things you like about the resume. If you see anything you'd recommend for enhancements, uh, type those in as well so we can all help each other out. So I'll scroll down the resume just like a recruiter would be looking at it. Let's see a summary. Um, yeah, somebody said, where's Prosper? Yeah, yeah, I happen to know where that is because I have a friend that lived, lived there, but um, you want to put the closest major city. Yeah, um, unless you only want to work in Prosper. Yeah, so I, I would put the closest major city if you're willing to commute. And you may want to say Dallas, no, Frisco area. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, let's see. So there's a summary section, areas of expertise career highlights, 
professional experience. Well, good longevity there, that's great. Nice clean layout with the dates right justified. Do you have a couple of questions about that additional experience? Education and community involvement. If you've been a leader, since you're a board member, I would put community leadership if you think that's appropriate for that. So at first glance, this is a nice layout. I would say there's a lot of text. Um, people are gonna get lost in the sea of words on this. And at a glance, I can't see what you are. Um, no, you got regional vice president underneath your name. Underneath oh, your name. see, I missed it. I missed that because I'm used to just seeing contact information up there. Interesting. I would, and then also these blue blocks with the border around it. Not all applicant tracking systems would like those. So I would move this regional vice president and put it as a header right above your summary. And I think I would just pick one of these two line statements or edit it to align with the jobs you're applying for. I don't know if people would read all of these. And these are used kind of using some overused words that recruiters are getting tired of seeing. Results driven, um, proven success in leveraging critical market insights to identify market. Well, that's kind of neat though. I like that one. Dynamic change agents. Okay. Um, I would pick one and have that be your summary. And maybe you modify it depending on the job you're applying to. And then lots of wonderful areas of expertise. You want your top three, three or so to be aligned directly with the. Um, it's hard to read. That's just hard to read because it's a blog yeah, of text. It all blurs together. And I've heard people say that these pipe marks kind of stop them and it doesn't help with the reading. Remember, keep in mind the person who's trying to read it. And I find those pipe marks, I agree, they're not very helpful. So that's why we recommend putting them in more columns spaced out. Less is more, more white space. Oh yeah, and this regional vice president, it still doesn't tell me, are you a HR vice president, operations vice president, marketing vice president, doesn't, I still don't know who you are yet. Um, and then career highlights. I would pick your top three or four and make them more like headlines. Nobody's going to read all of these. So you might need to work with somebody on those. Make them one line headlines. And I'm not big on bolding some of it and not bolding the other because it's telling the reader, well, I know you're not going to read it, so at least read this part. So um, so I'd work on those and make them impactful headlines and pick maybe three or four or maybe five of those. Okay. And then somebody said, isn't black lettering on white background best? Yes, I've heard many recruiters say that. Yes. Okay. I mean, this is the kind of and this is the kind of resume you would send as a PDF. You would not ever want to send this as a Word document because if you sent this to me, my computer is going to change the 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 margins and it won't look anything like what this is. Yes, yes, and some people choose to have an ATS version of the resume without all the formatting, and then the uploaded version that they send as a PDF, you know, has the formatting. However, that means you have to update two versions of your resume. So that's kind of a personal choice. Can you, can you go down to the second job? Because I think the second job is also at Bed Bath & Beyond, which yes, because that means you need to move those dates back next to the title and have for Bed Bath & Beyond put down 1998, 2020. Yes, yes. And also it looks like this might be two different roles that you may have played. So I'd list them all out and that shows, you know, regional manager, put the dates, the 1998 to whatever dates, regional vice president, and then zone vice president. I don't know if that's a different job or what it was, but put the dates for those in parentheses right up next to those jobs and put the 
updates that your Bed Bath Beyond on the same line as Bed Bath and Beyond, just like we did. You may want to look at our sample resume that we shared. And, and, and also, I think I'd put a uh, space between the slashes between president and regional because if somebody does a word search, unless they're going to do president slash regional, it's not going to come up. So yeah. you want to make sure that uh, a search uh, a search will come up correctly. Yes, yes. Okay. And again, this seems a little text heavy, but there are only two lines long, spearheaded multiple reduction efforts. So I'd say, so what? What, what was the result? And so then I would, if the result was you reduced expenses by $5 million, I would start the bullet point with reduced capital expenses by $5 million or whatever that is. So spearheaded isn't as strong of a verb. Facilitated transformation. So what? What was the outcome? What was the accomplishment? Established safety is a core value. So what? What was the result? I think all of these, you could play the so what game and get to a stronger verb. So this might be, you might have fun talking through this with either a recruiter or career coach and make these bullet points pop a little. Some of those so what's may be at the very top in his, uh, where he, right there in the highlight section, because there he's yeah, putting numbers like, and things. Yes. And, yes. you know, I, I personally would like to see it with the job. I want to know yeah. when, when you had to do it. Yeah. And, and I tend to see more of the highlight when you're applying for a job and you need to show a track record of achieving highlights over a series of jobs or something. So yeah, if all of these can be found down below, yeah, maybe move some of them down below. And additional experience, oh, okay. Maybe that's prior relevant experience. Is additional, is that the same time or, yeah. okay. Education, cool, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So um, good job there. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me on LinkedIn. And I think I have just a moment to show one more resume. And then we had a third one that we may not get time to show. And so the third person, if you have a urgent question, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I can help you out there. Can you see this one? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. So been, you have a summary there, got some technical areas of expertise, professional experience. Yeah, I got some dates there. We need to work on that. We'll probably come back to that in a second. Additional professional experience. Yeah, I use the word prior because additional means, okay, is that going on now or when, when is that? It doesn't give me a reference. So, um, education and development. I would say education and certifications because you've achieved some major certifications there. And you could put, if you're applying for jobs that require a PMP, you could put comma PMP at the top of your resume. However, the applicant tracking systems will read that as part of your name and you may have to edit it, but so that's a personal choice there. And I like this, Minneapolis metro area. You may live in a suburb somewhere, um, but, it, but your closest kind of area where you're looking for yeah, it's the Minneapolis area. And um, thanks for calling into this session. We're in Dallas, Texas, and it's nice to hear from somebody from um, Minneapolis. Minnesota. Minnesota, yes. And I would recommend on your email, I would, if you can, for your job search purposes, carl.chang, and if you have to add a, add a couple of numbers to make it unique, it'll make it easier for recruiters to find you in their stack of emails. Um, and it looks like more of a professional email. And people are telling me I need to change from Yahoo like to Gmail or, or something um, more modern, okay. And this is a little long. I would see if you can get this down to three lines. And then once again, these words all kind of run together and the pipe marks aren't very help those. Yeah. Spread those, out, spread those out. Yeah. You know, three rows of three. Yeah. And for technical jobs, I like seeing this up front. For not so technical jobs down at the bottom, the dates. Please look at our sample that we put in, in chat. And um, you, you want to realign your dates. 
So on the line with the company name the whole time you were there. Oh, you do have the whole time. Okay, but these, and you can off the months on your resume. It makes it look cleaner. The dates for those jobs, put those in parentheses right after your job title and don't write justify those. Okay. Okay, but lots of great experience there. Lots of great experience. Okay, so I think I'm out of time. And sorry for the third person. If you have any questions, person number three, feel free to reach out. And thanks everybody for playing along. Carol, thank you very, very much. If you'd like to reach out to Carol, this is her uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, if you do send her a note, please send her a, uh, if you want to connect with her, please send a personal note. Uh, personally, I don't connect with anybody without a personal note. I think Carol follows the same rule. You know, uh, if you're going to be on LinkedIn, tell somebody why you should connect. So please do that. Please do so. Uh, next week, our speaker will be Locke Alderson. He'll be talking about the resume is not dead. So please join us. Uh, again, next Thursday for a different perspective on resumes. Uh, and if you need to get the sample resume, the one page bio, the sample T cover letter, please send an email to resume at careerdfw.org, resume at careerdfw.org. And I will uh, tell me what you're looking for. And I will uh, reply back to you maybe Saturday before I uh, get back to you uh, with it, but I'll get them back to you in the next couple of days. Uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training five days a week, so we hope you'll join us. To, uh, oh, today at two o'clock, coming up in three or four minutes, if I talk real, real fast, uh, you can find out about Career DFW and CareerUSA.org, how it started. Uh, we'll take a look at the websites live online, and I'll share some of my uh, top career tips and uh, things that I think you need to be focusing on in your job search. So that's coming up at two o'clock. Uh, or as soon as this session's over, he, he said, if I'm a few minutes late, that's okay. Uh, tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, 9.30 in the morning, Central Time, open forum, the first Friday of every month, we always do open forum. We'll talk about whatever it is you wanna talk about. So uh, just please come with your questions and everybody online can offer their opinions and it's always a good free for all. And uh, we hear some really good discussions. So come join us. Uh, if you're a woman and looking for a women's group just for career talk, uh, tomorrow, the first and third Fridays of each month, Women of Wisdom will be meeting. You do need to send an email to wowww at careerdfw.org. This is an invitation only group because uh, they're trying to keep the group down to 20 or 25 people so that they can have a lot of discussion uh, as they talk every, uh, every other week. On uh, the next Monday, our speaker is Charlie Zinger from the South Lake Focus Group. He'll be talking about networking tips and techniques. My and buddy from EDS days. Huh? Oh, that's my buddy from EDS days. Okay. Yeah, we talk about networking. Every Monday, we do networking. Uh, every Tuesday, we talk about LinkedIn. This Tuesday, how to create a LinkedIn brand that tells your key contacts who you are, what you do, and how you help. This is Terry Sullivan from BuzzPro, uh, sort of a different kind of approach to um, uh, marketing and how do you market, market yourself more commercially. Uh, but please note this event will not be recorded. Uh, so if you want to watch it, you do need to watch it live. And then uh, next Wednesday, if you're interviewing Wednesdays, we'll be on session number six, interview openings, closing, and follow up. Sessions one through five was pre preparing for an interview. Sessions six, six through 10 were all about the actual interview themselves. Uh, this session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and more easily accessible on the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, that'll be later. It'll probably be tonight before it gets up there after dinner time, before it gets up there tonight. Please follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. On the YouTube channel, look, some, this is really the easiest way to find the videos because I can put them in different playlists for you to make it easy to find. So if you click where the green arrow it says playlist and then find the list that you'd like to look at, resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn. Uh, don't click on the video, but click down below where it says view full playlist where that red arrow is. And then up will come a list of all the different dates with the most recent ones should be on top. If not, click the little sort button and you'll be able to see the most current one we've got. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, please join the Career USA mailing list. Please send an email to career USA, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io, uh, and you'll get a daily email uh, from me. Uh, you won't be spammed because the emails only come from me, 
and every day you'll find out what we're talking about along with the Zoom link for that day. Okay, it's time to give away a unlimited use of jobscan.co for one month. What we want you to do is open up your chat box and put a number between one and 100. Hint, don't use one. Uh, and uh, the two closest numbers without going over, we're gonna play the price is right rules. So we need you to put a number in the chat box between two and 100. And uh, the two closest numbers without going over will be our winner. Give everybody a few seconds to do that. So far, we only have two contestants. Oh, there we go, three. Anybody else? Cool. Four. Yeah, take advantage. It's a good tool. Oh, we have one contestant on Facebook. Thank you. All right. Five. Four, three, two, one. All right, let's see what our winning number is. Our winning number is 28. So it looks like our winner is Jason Irish. Jason, please put your, uh, we'll just have one winner today. So Jason, if you will put your uh, email address into the chat box, that way I can copy it over. And uh, you'll get an email the 1st of July with the details on uh, how you can win. So that will be our two. I debated a higher number, lower number, and I went lower this week. Oh, well, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be higher next week, maybe, hint, hint. So, all right. Uh, please note, uh, Carol's a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. I've never gotten paid to do any of this over the last 13 years. This is what I do to give back to the community. So uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full, no part-time employees. Uh, please consider making a donation when you get your next your next great job so that we can continue to provide the services that, that we do. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, there's that email address if you'd like to do it. Carol, once again, thank you very much. And to those who want to find out about Career at FW and Career USA, I'm jumping over to another webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cause you to run late. So no, that's okay. <laughs> Have a good day.